Hi, this is Reggie York. I am going to do a presentation on analyzing data in a 2x2 two two table when you're using the Fisher exact test. This is a, a statistic that's useful when you have this kind of data and you have a small sample size. In this presentation, you will be given guidance on how to use a computer website to determine if you have statistical significance in a 2x2 two two table with the use of this particular statistical test. This means you have data on two variables, each of which is measured as a dichotomy, meaning only two categories like yes or no. This presentation accompanies a book by me. You don't need that book to do this presentation, however. What will be illustrated is the example of the book compares the proportion of people who regularly exercise with those who do not on the basis of experiencing recent minor illness. So we think that exercise will make a difference. Here is the data. People were asked, do you regularly engage in aerobic exercise? Yes or no. They were also asked, have you recently had minor illnesses? To some extent, none at all. So here is the yes answer. Here is the no answer. The numbers 0 and 1 are sometimes codes for no versus yes. We have it on both categories. So you see here that uh, for those who did regularly exercise, of the 22 people who did, 14 of them had minor illnesses to some extent. Eight of them had minor illnesses, not at all. Over here, we have those who did not exercise with the same kind of information. Three major questions for data analysis. The first one, did the data go in the expected direction? Meaning, did the data show that those who exercised were better off? Number two, were the data statistically significant? You cannot draw conclusions about what you found in a relationship between variables if that data fail to be statistically significant because it means there's too much of a likelihood the data could be explained by chance rather than being something we can really depend upon to be real. Third, how strong is the relationship between the two variables? For example, did the exercisers do just a little bit better than non-exercisers or did they do a lot better? Looking at it from the standpoint of the data, did it go in the expected direction? When you examine a two by two table, you typically put the cause variable, also known as the independent variable, in the columns and the effect variable, also known as the dependent variable, in the rows. This is a normal convention. There's no law that says you have to do it, but that's normally the way to do it. And it's good to keep something like that consistent to keep them getting confused when you're interpreting data in a in a two by two table. You, comp you compute percentages by column. So each column will have percentages for each cell in that column. You compare percentages by rows. So you might say that uh, you percentage it down and you compare it across. Percentage down, read it across. What you'll see is whether the, the comparison supports the expectation. Here are the data again. You can see we're going to look now at a comparison. You can see that um, of, the per, of the six of the persons who engaged in exercise, there were a total of 20, excuse me, a total of 22 people, if I can get the cursor there, okay. 22 people said yes to the engaged in exercise. Of those, 64%, 14 to 64%, had um, illness to some extent. 36% uh, did not. Did the same for those who did not exercise. 75% had illness. 25% no. So what we can do is we can compare either of these, either these two sets of data or this one. Let's look at this one up here first of all. 
the 64% who of exercisers who had minor illnesses, this figure should be lower than this one, as it is. Down here, this figure should be higher than this one because it's the one where people did not have recent minor illness. This then shows the data did go in the hypothesized or expected direction. Exercise, this shows exercisers are better off. But we cannot conclude exercisers were better off unless we find that these data are statistically significant. By the way, if you compare these two, it looks like a relatively small difference. It looks like a relatively small advantage for the those who exercise. And that means there's a good chance you will not have statistical significance, but we're going to look at that specifically. Here is the link for the statistical analysis of data. Uh, you should be sure you have the data in front of you, as you but you, I will show this in the presentation. I will click on the website and demonstrate how to use it for our data. Here is the actual website that we will that I will uh, demonstrate. I'm now going to go to the that web particular website. I'm going to make it smaller, first of all. This is the entire uh, page. We're going to look here at the data entry part. But let me first of all make this bigger so you can see it. Excuse me. I'm going to go down to where we are going to put in our data. Right here is the data entry table for this examination of statistical significance. The zero here means no, the one means yes. The one means yes, the, the, the zero means no. So in this cell, we have those who did not exercise and had minor illness. The number in our table we just examined is, was nine for that. This is uh, the cell for those who did exercise and did have minor illness. That number is 14. For those who did not exercise and did not have illness, that number is 3. And for those who exercised and did not have illness, that number is 8. What we're going to do now is calculate the phi coefficient, I mean, I'm sorry, calculate the Fisher exact test. Going to hit that one. You can see some numbers popped up. The critical thing we're going to examine is right down here where it says Fisher Exact Probability Test. You see that this is, refers to the p-value. The one-tailed version is one we will use because we have reason to believe there is a relationship between exercise and illness and that the those who exercise have the advantage. That is our expectation. Because we have an expectation, we use the two, the one-tailed version. Um, you can see a 0 0.390231, etc. All we need is 0.39. Uh, so the, this means the p-value for this particular Fisher test was 0 0.39. In the social sciences, the standard for determining whether statistical significance was achieved is, point, is less than 0.05. So we compare this figure to, to the figure of less than 0.05, and we find that, of course, 0.39 is much higher than less than 0.05. So we fail to find statistical significance. That means we failed to find a relationship between exercise and illness. It does not mean we found a weak relationship. It was not significant. We just simply should say we failed to find a relationship. Here is a brief summary of what we have just done. We used a website web page from the internet to analyze our data. We examined data regarding the relationship between exercise and minor illness. We found that our data showed that the exercisers were less likely to have recent minor illnesses, so they were better off, but we found these data 
were not statistically significant. Therefore, our conclusion should be that we failed to find a relationship between exercise and recent minor illness. That is the end of the presentation. I hope this helps. Good luck.